I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. Today is Thursday, February 29th. We are finally at the end of the month here, and uh, starting tomorrow, March 1st, you're allowed to keep sheephead, and then we only have another short month to go before we're allowed to keep rockfish as well. So, uh, good news. Always nice to have additional things to fish for. And uh, bad news is that this weekend, the weather's going to be a little bit on the bad side as far as fishing goes. Uh, Saturday, you know, we have this big storm hit the uh, northern central California right now and it's going to uh, looks like it down here Saturday uh, rain not like we have with those atmospheric rivers but uh, there will be some rain and there will be some wind on our local waters I'm sure it'll be blown out through Sunday uh, you might be able to fish coastal I'm not sure I would check the weather before you go I wouldn't try and roam to one of the islands uh, at this time, but uh, midweek it improves and it looks pretty decent throughout the uh, throughout the next week and the weekend as well. So after you go to the uh, Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show next week, Thursday through Sunday, um, you can go and uh, do some fishing on the weekend if the weather permits. Speaking of the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show, I'm going to be there. I have a seminar uh, on Thursday at 1.30 on Calico Bass Fishing with uh, Benny Florentino, Jerry Mayhew, and uh, Bobby Martinez. Should be a good seminar. Always a lot of fun to be on stage with those guys. So uh, if you guys are there, I encourage you to stop by. It's on the main uh, seminar stage. And, uh, yeah, should be a good show. I'll talk more about it next week. I might do my report a, week, a day early because I'm going to need to uh, be at the show on Thursday. So uh, you can look forward to that. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, heading up to the Channel Islands, as usual. Uh, the only coverage I'm really hearing from up there is the Aloha Spirit, who's been trying to catch uh, halibut and sea bass and calico bass and stuff like that. Uh, I was hoping to see some sea bass over the, up there over the full moon, but that did not occur. They did have some nice halibut and some really good quality calico bass up there. Uh, weather up there is not going to be great this weekend. So if you want to go, I'd wait till next week, midweek, or next weekend and take a shot to head up. Uh, I don't think that the amount of wind they're going to have is going to really knock things down. It seems like the water has been holding pretty steady. I was out uh, Saturday and Tuesday, Saturday after the previous storm and the Tuesday after the uh, one we just had, and both days was uh, 61 degree water out front. It didn't even fluctuate to even a tenth of a degree. Um, we finally had some coverage from... Uh, what I would call the uh, the middle area around uh, SBI and maybe San Nicolas Island, I'm not sure. I know that the uh, the pride went out of 22nd Street Landing, caught some sea bass and halibut. I don't think they went to Cat, but they might have. They might have ventured uh, out a little further to look around. I guess uh, we'll see if they continue to catch fish and if uh, and what happens with that. But uh, that might have come from up that up in that zone. I'm not 100% sure. What I am sure of is my friend Jonathan ran over to SBI uh, to try and catch some yellows at uh, on the full moon there. And uh, he did find some fish. Uh, lack of current had them not biting. He was fishing uh, knife jigs and stuff like that. And uh, real productive way to target those types of fish. But it uh, didn't really work out for him. But, you know, at the uh, later in the trip, he went and fished whitefish, or maybe earlier in the trip, loaded up on a nice quality of whitefish on uh, flat ball type jigs and shallow water. And his wife brought home a bunch. Uh, you know, he keeps talking about how delicious they are to eat them uh, raw, sashimi style. So I don't particularly, particularly like whitefish. They're uh, <clears throat> cooked. They're not great, in my opinion. But I'm very picky as far as fish eating goes. But uh, I might give that a shot next time I uh, encounter one. So it looks like there's some sign of yellow at the island. I wouldn't doubt there's sea bass there as well. Um, you can probably catch halibut and stuff like that as well. But, you know, with rockfish closed, uh, SBI is a pretty small target. And uh, it's a lot easier to miss than hit. So might want to wait a bit on that until something more uh, consistent happens. Heading down to Catalina. Well, I'm going to skip Clemente because there was no coverage out there this week. Uh, had a few different people... Give me some reports from there. My friend Gary Ray is fishing the island on Saturday, and they're fishing the uh, swim baits in boiler zones on the backside and front side of the island. I think they're up west. 
you're reporting really good fishing, good quality of fish, nice, good size, average grade. Surprisingly good fishing considering full moon and post frontal, he said. But uh, uh, Benny Florentino went there the, the next day, Sunday or Monday, I'm not sure exactly. And he said it was a lot slower for him. But uh, he did uh, get some nice fish. One of his clients got a, a six and a half pounder, which is really nice fish by cat standards anyway. <coughs> Heck, good, good fish anywhere. Um, the other guys that have been fishing there is uh, bite sport fishing. I talked to uh, Brandon Hayward earlier in the week, and he said his uh, his boats are they've been running these lobsters, sea bass combo deals, all this other stuff, and they're just switching to uh, you know sea bass, yellow halibut kind of trips on the weekends. On Fridays and Sundays, they have open party trips uh, through all of March, and. Um, that's a really good trip to go on because not only do you get to fish with some of the top guides who are out there very regularly and have that the bite dialed in pretty well, it's also a good opportunity to get out there and, you know, uh, if you're a private boater and you want to do that kind of stuff, um, it's a good investment in your own ability. And don't pay attention so much to where they're fishing as to why they're fishing somewhere. You know, I'm sure if you <clears throat> ask whoever's running your boat, Hey, what are you looking for conditions-wise here? They'll be happy to share it with you. You know what I mean? It's a great opportunity to learn. I get so many guys that uh, hit me up through social media or emails asking, you know, hey, can you go fishing on my boat and kind of show me this type of thing? And uh, if I responded yes to everybody, I'd have to <laughs> – probably wouldn't have any time to fish by myself. But uh, there are very easy to do that. Just hire a guide. You know, if you want to go inshore fishing – Hire Jerry Mayhew or Benny Florentino if you want to go catch yellows or sea bass, you know. Go out on bite sport fishing. If you want to catch tuna, same deal. Go out with these guys. It's a four-pack boat. Bring two or three of your buddies. And don't just sit there with a beer in your hand waiting to catch fish, but actively talk to the guys that are running the boat. And they're always happy to share information. And even, you know, deep drop swordfish, whatever. That's going to cut your learning curve way down because you can – talk to them, through, you know, they can talk you through the day and kind of explain what the process is and what's going on, which will make it a little bit easier for you to kind of figure things out on your own down the road. So, something to keep in mind, but they have trips available. Um, halibut. <clears throat> I never thought I'd just be reporting on halibut, but halibut is the name of the game lately. It's uh, still biting really well. I know the uh, uh, native son now, I think, they're up to 150 legals for their since they started running their trips, which is quite a few halibut. Um, considering you don't really see that many legals normally, and I think their, their leaderboard is all 30 pound plus fish. So they're getting a really good grade of fish. Private boaters up here doing really good as well. My friend Chuck, um, he went out. I don't remember what day, midweek, and um, he fished just you know outside of Long Beach. It's just a Find some hard bottom out there somewhere, and, you know, it seems like the key depth is like 80 to 100 feet of water right now. But, you know, don't quote me on that. They could be shallower. They could be deeper. But uh, <clears throat> when you got to the receiver, they were out of bait, so they went and made some smelt in the harbor. And uh, Albert loves smelt, and uh, he one of those smelts he got a 31-pounder on, and they also had some more fish, uh, some shorts, and I, I, maybe another legal or two. I'm not sure. But... Uh, you know, it just shows you, you go out, find the right area, have good bait, uh, concentrate on areas that are high percentage. If you guys didn't see my halibut video, I did one for my SoCal Bite Fishing Academy a few weeks ago. You can probably find it on YouTube here under BD Outdoors. And um, you should be successful. Also, um, the halibut derby at Dana Point had been a little bit on the slow side this year. It seemed like not a lot of halibut are down there, but those... They seem to be biting a lot better now. I know the boats are uh, back on those fish again. So if you're looking, to, you don't have to fish in a crowded zone. You can look down off Dana and catch fish there as well. And I'm sure you can catch them all the way to San Diego if you wanted to. Um, so I fished a couple days over the weekend. Yeah, sorry about that. I fished a couple days. Um, I fished Saturday solo. I wasn't going to go, and then the weather was nice and got bored I don't normally fish by myself. My wife hates it, but uh, yeah, it's sometimes it's. <laughs> I, I often tell her that would you rather have me stay home and be miserable, or go out on a boat by myself and potentially be unsafe but come home happy? 
and she agrees that uh, uh, happy, they say happy wife, happy life, but happy husband, happy life for, for women, I guess. Um, one of the nice things about fishing solo is I was able to go out and do some stuff that I don't normally do when I go with friends, and that's just to drive around and find new spots. And I love doing that kind of stuff. And I had been looking at my Simrad, uh, my CMAP chart on my Simrad, and seen all these little tiny rocks uh, scattered out in front of the break wall that could potentially hold bass. And uh, I went and fished a bunch of those. And I uh, had some really nice fish. I only caught about maybe, I don't know, 12 fish. Maybe 10, maybe 15. I, I didn't keep close, close tabs. But quite a few nice fish. You know, 4 pound plus fish on the uh, 8 inch slug on the lead head. And uh, lost a couple of real giants that... Uh, yeah, just never even, never even got their head turned before they rolled off. But uh, that was fun, and uh, I only took one picture of the first bass I caught. It wasn't the biggest, but I really, uh, yeah, I didn't want to deal with the trying to take selfies. But uh, yeah, so I did that, and then also I looked around at some of the expanse of the hard bottom that we have, basically from Point Furman down to. LA Harbor. So basically from the break wall out to the horseshoe kelp where you start getting those rocks and stuff. There's big areas of hard bottom out there. And I spent some time driving around out there. And it's pretty desolate most of that stuff. But if you find bait balls that are suspended mid-water column over these expanses of hard bottom, they're, they're bigger spots. Here, I'll put, a, I'll put a screenshot of one up here. But um, you can, you know, make a drift and you can fish power fishing techniques. I'm sure during the warmer water months, you might be able to fish crankbaits even at 60 or 80 feet of water and catch fish there. But um, I threw a big spinner bait. I threw the uh, two and a half pounds plater in a guppy spin and got three fish just fan casting around. And then uh, I went back to that zone on Tuesday when Matt and I fished. And uh, it wasn't really biting, but he got a fish on the guppy spin. And I got a two or three on the swim baits. Um, doing that same thing, finding bait schools, drifting, and just fan cast run at hard bottom. Like I said, if it's, uh, if it's biting now, I'm sure it's gonna bite a lot better come summertime, but there is a ton of that hard bottom out there, and if you don't have the bait, you're not gonna have any fish there. So you need to look for bait more than you need to look for fish. Um, we went to PV afterwards, conditions were just garbage. Uh, current going in bad directions. Ton of micro bait everywhere, a bunch of big top smelt, uh, chasing your lure in constantly, and uh, we bailed on that. But before we did, we, you know, it was a really nice big high tide and calm water, calm swell allowed me to get into some tighter spots that I like to fish. And um, well, we didn't catch any calicos, we caught some sand bass, uh, real shallow, you know, casting up the two or three feet of water with crankbaits. And um, it's interesting, you don't realize how many sand bass there are at Palos Verdes or anything like that, but they're, they're just associating to that, uh, that hard rock that doesn't have kelp on it. So the calicos are related to the kelp and rock, and if you just get clean rock, a lot of sand bass up there. We didn't, I mean, last year when, the, uh, when all the kelp got pulled out, we had tons of sand bass um, in the shallow zones like Point Furman and stuff like that. But, uh, and what's interesting, they're not that kind of coffee color sand bass you normally catch in shale areas. They're, you know, nice, clean, gray and white sand bass, which is uh, interesting. I don't really, have an experience enough to really talk it, you know, knowledgeably about it, but it's kind of an interesting thing. And uh, I got a little video here of Matt catching a couple bass, and um, it's not very exciting. They're small sand bass, but um, it kind of shows the thought process we have when we're fishing in a shallow area about how to stay safe and stay in communication with one another as to rocks to look out for or potential dangers that the guy at the wheel may not see or if you're running a trolling motor, the guy in the trolling motor may not be looking at the back of the boat and seeing what's going on. So that, that little video is here.
Got one. Nice. <laughs> Follower, sand bass, <laughs> Andy Sandy. That's a big, that's a big problem right there. Yeah, there's a it, the fucking rocks. Watch this. Yes. Deeper, I think, right? Yeah, it's deep. Can't see the Garibaldi sitting on it. I see the Garibaldi on it. Huh? I see the Garibaldi on it. Yeah, fish? Yeah. We're going to roll over this one? Oh, Eric. Jesus. All right, finally, uh, last week I talked about boats heading back down to Colonet, which I did over the weekend. And uh, I also mentioned that that full moon might get those bluefin to pop back up again, and it did. Several boats caught uh, bluefin at night. On the way down there, I think one boat caught some fish during the day. Uh, fish range from 10 pounds to 70 pounds, which is a good sign. It's not just those big jumbos that uh, seem to be wintering in that general area. Um, at the same time, uh, fish up reported some fish uh, way out west. Uh, good size area of bluefin out there as well. They're far enough out west that uh, you got to have pretty good weather and uh, a day and a half trip to get to them at least. But uh, who knows what's going to happen. They may slide in. They may slide up to Cortez and Tanner. They may just go back to wherever they came from. I don't know. But uh, it is starting to shape up like it has in previous years. Uh, we could hope that uh, maybe we'll have fish in our zone here come April, May. They may already be in our zone. We don't know it. We're just not seeing it because there's no coverage. I don't know. But the uh, the boats that went down there, they also caught some nice yellowtail on the yo-yo at the uh, high spot at Colonet. It wasn't exactly wide open, but uh, they did get some fish. And they also got a lot of really nice quality reds and lingcod down there. What is interesting is that... Um, you know, we talked about El Nino, and they're saying that uh, this was the wettest February since, I think, 19, no, yeah, maybe 1998, which was the 1998 El Nino. Um, the water temps being what they are uh, also had me thinking that maybe that is a, a thing. And also interesting is down at San Quentin, there have been yellows biting at San Martin Island for months and there's just, just seems like there's a tremendous volume of fish down there, which is unusual for winter yellows down there, in my opinion. I spent quite a bit of time fishing down there over the years and paying attention to what's going on. It's, it just seems odd that they're catching fish every single day, every single day. It seems like there's a volume of fish that is greater than normal. Um, there's also not a lot of fish at Colonet, which is, you know, just 60 miles or 50 miles away from there. So that might be all those fish from up there, down there, or there may be, just be more coming up from below, which may hopefully continue to slide up the coast, and we may have some really good spring yellowtail fishing if those fish make, continue to make that move. And I know that from the, the jump from San Martin to the Coronado Island seems really long, but it doesn't really take that, you know, that could be three weeks and those fish could be up here if they move up. So interesting things to think about. Uh, a lot of theoretical stuff. The only thing not theoretical is the weather's going to be lousy this weekend. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. I hope that uh, you guys have a great weekend and stay dry. And if you're going to head out fishing, check the weather before you go out.